Picking up where we left off in the last video, I want to go ahead now and begin to talk about the fluid simulation in Rebel. This is a really key point because it's probably the most major difference between Rebel and other 2D graphics applications. Now, the concept of fluid simulation in Rebel is that everything that we're doing within Rebel is going to be affected by the fact that we're working within that fluid simulation. All of the media are going to either have wet or dry characteristics, and being in full control of the wet or dry state of the artwork is going to have a big impact on your success with Rebel. So this is a really, really important concept for you to master. Now that said, the very first thing that I want to do is I want to come down here to the Layers panel. I want to come down here to this little X, and if I click that, this is going to allow me to clear the contents of that layer. And this will not only clear any paint that's on that layer, but also wetness. And we'll understand that just a little bit. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on this water drop. You can see here, this is going to be the water tool. I also want you to notice that you can see that we go into a special mode, as you can see by this icon up here. And this is going to allow us to visualize the water. The reason why that's important to understand is because it's going to appear as if we're about to paint with a blue color, even though you can see that currently I have a color set to black. You can also see that a similar icon is highlighted here in the layers panel. The reason why is because whenever we're going into the water tool or the dry tool, which is right next to it, we're going to be entering into this visualize wet mode that you can see here. Now we can turn that on or off right here, but when you're painting with the water tool, it's a good idea to have it on. Now you can see that we have a water slider over here, and the idea of this is that we can control the volume of water on the brush. And you can see we have a number of different brushes that we can paint with. So I'm just going to start with wet one here. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the volume of water all the way to 100%. And in this way, I'm going to be able to see pretty clearly. And maybe I'll even increase the brush size a bit so that we're going to be able to see this a little bit easier. And I'm going to go ahead and begin to paint. And what you're going to see is that it appears that we're painting with a blue color, but that's not really what's going to happen. Now, as soon as I let off the brush, a diffusion process is going to occur where the water is going to begin to evaporate. So I'm going to let off the brush now, and you're going to see that the color of that blue is going to gradually change and become lighter. And you can also see that it's moving around. And this is the fluid simulation at work. So the idea here is that even with pure water, we're going to be seeing the fluid simulation as soon as we begin to diffuse. Now, the idea of this is that it never really dries. And the reason why that is is because what happens is as the excess water evaporates, you can see it gets lighter and lighter, but eventually stops at sort of a baby blue. And that is indicating that this part of the paper here is in a damp state. Now, if I wanted to dry that, I could come over here to the layers panel, and you can see that this icon right here that has the wavy lines, this is indicating that I can dry that layer. So I click this, it's going to instantly remove all water from that layer. Now, just like that, I can come over here to this next icon, which has the three drops, this is going to allow me to wet the layer. This will cause the entire layer to become damp. Everything is that same baby blue color. However, if I paint here with the water tool, you'll see the water tool is applying more volume than what that layer has on it. And you can see that now that I'm diffusing this out, it's traveling into these damp areas. And the reason why is a effect that's called surface tension. The idea is that water wants to go where water already exists and it doesn't want to go where water doesn't exist. And the reason why is because the dry areas are going to resist the water invading into them. Because the entire layer here is damp, when I put down water, all of the water is just going to dissipate over the entire surface. However, if I dry that and I do the exact same thing, what you're going to see is that the water is going to want to remain in the areas where wetness is, and it's not going to want to encroach into the dry areas. This is very much like a bead of water on a car it doesn't really want to expand over the entire surface of the car. Instead, it wants to stay in a little bead. This is exactly what happens when you're painting with watercolor on dry paper. So it's very important that you're in control of where the wetness is and where the dryness is on your layer. And like I say, you can see very clearly that we're able to control the volume of water, and we can also choose to dry or wet at any point in time. Now there's a third button over here which has these sort of swirlies. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and begin to paint some water, and then I'm quickly going to come over here and click that button. But before I do that, I just want you to note the volume of water that I currently have on the layer. So I'm going to go ahead now, come over here and click that. And what you can see is it instantly removes all the excess water 
and leaves the layer in a damp state in the areas where water existed. So these three buttons right here, the wet layer, dry layer, and the fast dry, are all going to allow us to control where the layer is going to be wet, dry, or damp, and it's going to allow us to affect the entire layer at once, whereas the water tool is going to allow us to paint water into specific areas, and that's going to have a big impact on the success or failure of a lot of the other tools that we're going to be using in Rebel. And again, you can see very clearly here because I allowed these two areas to touch, the water from this area is traveling into the water from that area. So you really, really want to spend some time playing with the water tool and playing with these three buttons until you fully understand exactly what they're doing because they're going to have a big, big impact on your success in Rebel. Now, like I said before, if we come down here and we click on this X, it's not just going to clear the paint off of this layer. It's also going to clear the wetness. So if I click that, it's going to get rid of everything off of that layer. Now, we're going to pick up from this point in the next video.